welcome. But I'm delighted to say Philippe Claire is with us to give us the uh, thoughts from somebody with uh, a French tinge. Uh, Philippe, how did France play last night? Um, I thought I, I wasn't that surprised. I was, well, I wasn't surprised by the performance of the French team. I was perhaps pleasantly surprised by the performance of the uh, the Ireland team, which I wasn't perhaps expecting to put up such a fight. Um, and I think like most people in France, I was expecting something a bit more complicated than against the Dutch, strangely enough, if we didn't score early, as had been the case against uh, against Holland. And um, I, from a French perspective, if I, first of all, uh, I think you will have noticed that the reactions after the game, be it from Didier Deschamps or uh, Benjamin Pavard or Adrien Rabiot and so forth were extremely complimentary. And, and they were complimentary in a way that was not condescending, by the way. It was not the tap of the shoulder, well done, guys, good game, thank you very much. It was, no, that was really, really, really hard. Um, now, France does struggle against teams which know how to play with a low block and which obviously Ireland did quite well. And, uh, you know, which is why when you look at the number of chances, if you, if you say France shaded it on, on the night... Um, I have to say there is a sense of relief. Um, we're very happy to have Mike Mignon. I can confirm to you that's the case, uh, who was absolutely immense and shows that we've got um, the success of Hugo Lois, but we were not in much doubt of that. Uh, but again, I think, yes, there's a sense in France of a, a certain kind of relief because it was a very, very tough game against a very tough opponent, which I think surprised many uh, in the general public. I don't think it surprised people within the French staff I don't think France turned up with the idea they were going to turn up and win. Uh, I know that they had prepared this game very, uh, very thoroughly, that they had also done loads of uh, video analysis with the players of the very strength of the Irish team. Obviously, as you know, they had spent quite a bit of time studying um, uh, this young gentleman, Mr. Ferguson's game. Uh, Kylian Mbappe had told about, uh, talked about it. I mean, so they, they, they arrived. The thing as well, I think, which... Uh, perhaps should should give people heart in Ireland. I'm sure everybody will have been given heart by this performance. Is the fact that the French team that struggled against them certainly at the end of the game was not the French team that arrived with the idea it's going to be easy. It was not the French team that arrived with their mind already on something else, going back to their clubs or we've done what mattered against the Dutch. No, they were up, France were really geared towards that game and they struggled. And um, so, yes, relief, I think, and satisfaction, because six points after those two games, which, you know, is not too bad a situation to be in um, before a, a long international break. What is a real international break, by the way? I've never understood why we called it the international break. Because we play internationals during the international break. But there you go. <laughs> An excellent uh, philosophical point there, Philippe. I would expect nothing less, to be honest. Um, but uh, now, that you, now that you point it out, it's obvious. Yeah, a good point. Um, the, the relief at the end when the save gets made, like it's a brilliant, brilliant save. But it's true yeah. that like they all went to celebrate with the keeper immediately afterwards to go, you basically won us the game. Um, yes, absolutely. Which is what uh, Didier Deschamps said. Um, an interesting expression, which when you look, Look at it. You think oh, that doesn't mean anything. He said he didn't save two points. He gave us three, mm. which, of course, is obvious. But you can see what he means there, because, by the way, also uh, this uh, this could have been a known goal by Jules Kunde, yeah. the header just yeah. before, uh, which was already a pretty decent save reaction. But that was a, a, it was top drawer for the top corner, really, as they would say. Um, and um, as just as you know, what what a debut by the way for Mike Mignon as a starter stops a penalty against the Netherlands at the very end of the game, and really saves two points or gives three points to France uh, uh, in Ireland. That's that's not a bad start for him for his French career. Even if he's had a few caps before, this is really now um, he's he's now in place and for a very long time, I would imagine. Were you surprised, Philippe, with? Uh... Kylian Mbappe's performance, r remarkably quiet by his standards. No, I, I to be honest, um, I, I was not that surprised. Uh, again, he's somebody who thrives on space, and Ireland were very good at denying that. Uh, he perhaps didn't quite have the support on his natural flank. I don't think Teo Hernandez had a, a great game, to be absolutely honest. And uh, I think... Uh, he might not have known Ogbené's name before the game, but I think he will remember it now. <laughs> um, and I, I think Kylian Mbappé, you know, missed that. I also think that the changes which had done by Deschamps actually surprised a few people. Um, 
you can see why you would uh, decide to in what you expect to be a more static game where they're going to be, as I said, a low block and trying to go through the low block to have somebody who has the aerial presence of Olivier Giroud. Um, but that didn't quite work. And the quality of the crossing was not good. Uh, the the way that the link-up play between, that we had seen against the Dutch between Griezmann and Bappe was not quite happening and, and Colomweni, by the way, because of his movement, was not happening against Ireland. So all of this put together, and I think you can explain, and particularly the lack of space for him to exploit, that, um, you know, he's not Superman. He cannot produce performances like he, he did against the Dutch every every single game. Um, so I, I wasn't entirely surprised uh, uh, about that. Um, I don't think that there was much in the French team's performance which was surprising, apart from, of course, Benjamin Pavard's goal, because... That's not what I'd seen coming, to be honest. I don't think anybody had seen him coming, including himself. Um, but thank thank you, Benjamin. Um, you actually uh, solved a big problem for us with another one to go. He only seems to score incredible goals, Pavar, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was obviously everybody remembers um, the one against Argentina at the World Cup. But the one against Sweden in the Nations League wasn't bad enough, bad, bad either. And, and this was was quite spectacular. I think it will be what Didier Deschamps was very, very happy with. It's the finish, we know we've got a great shot on him, but it was the alertness of mind when he realised, OK, there's a chance to intercept that ball very high up the pitch, which honestly is normally not his game. Uh, he's he's more of a defensive uh, fullback. He's a more traditional kind of fullback. And, um, yeah, um, I think that there was actually quite a lot of pleasure for many people to see him uh, score that goal because, as you know, um, he's had pretty tough time, uh, be it in, at club level or with the national team. He was certainly not a, a, a regular starter. So uh, that's a, a satisfaction. But I think that Ireland actually showed a few areas in which France have got problems. And I think that um, the left flank, defensively, when you've got when you've got Kylian Mbappe, uh, who is there, when you've got two Hernandez who is uh, flying left back, uh, there is, you know, of course, you hope that Rabio is going to do a bit of the work on the left hand side. But that leaves us quite exposed. And actually, Ireland were quite good at exposing uh, a, a few frailties, I would say, in the French setup, uh, including, of course, on um, uh, dead ball situations uh, at the end, where honestly, uh, it was not very reassuring, was it? I, I think maybe the, it, our, our assessment of it is, is ri- like we're obviously uh, riven with all of the insecurities that we have as a football nation and all the weight of history <laughs> bears down on it so we're half happy with what we did we're also a little bit disappointed that the uh, goal didn't go in at the end and we're desperately seeking some kind of external <laughs> validation here from you Philippe and you've given us a, it's like yeah actually no you guys weren't bad so because we, <laughs> we weren't sure if France were just stinking the joint out because they were terrible no no okay no Keep feeding us. No, and I think the, the, and I think the other thing is that the the quality of Aaron's performance showed how awful the Dutch performance was in Paris as well. Uh, the Dutch didn't have any of the cohesion and cohesiveness of of the Irish team. Um, they didn't have any of the fire, uh, which of course people commented upon because, as you will know, um, we are only, especially when it comes to sport. Um, stereotypes that they were very far away so even though people had been saying before the game you know everybody who had been watching the irish team uh, over the recent past was saying you know it's not quite the old kick and rush long ball blah blah, blah it's different um uh, people fell back on that <laughs> by saying oh well but with the irish you know uh, you know there's going to be fire it's going to be it's going to be fantastic you know um spirit within the side pushed by the wonderful public and so forth so we had quite a bit of that but i think Ireland earned quite a bit of respect from people who were expecting different uh, things from them. And honestly, that I think that looking at what we've seen in this group so far, it's very open, at least for second place. Wouldn't you agree? We hope so. We, we, like, that's the thing. If, if Ireland can maintain this level of performance that we put in against France with, yeah. with the quality that we showed, then we should be able to cause difficulties for everybody. And we just haven't been great about following up a good performance against a big side with good performances against the the medium sides and the weaker teams. And so that's our challenge. Mm. Yes. Well, um, I can tell you that if you were to play the Netherlands tomorrow, which unfortunately you are not playing, mm. 
um, you might you would give them a, a proper game. Um, but it might not be Mr. Kuman who is in charge by the time you know you meet up with the Dutch. Were they that bad? They were terrible. Yeah, they were awful. They were really awful. I mean, they, their first half was um, uh, absolutely well, I mean, an absolutely terrible performance. You didn't recognize. I mean, they had a few players missing, but even then, they were they were not good at all. I have to say, I do not. I haven't watched enough of the Greek team to to have uh, to give you major insight into uh, into them. But I think you'll do all right against Gibraltar. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> As we will. I mean, you say that, you say that, but we have had our trouble with them in the past. We scraped a one 0 win against them, and it required a world class, uh, Magnon esque save to uh, to beat them one 0 Go on, yeah, Kenny. Sorry, Philippe, could I ask you just on a, a slightly different yes. point? Is there any, um, seems an odd thing to say, any added pressure on the shoulders of uh, Didier Deschamps going into this qualifying campaign off the back of the World Cup victory in 2018? Mm. Just just the exit uh, in England and in the manner against Switzerland, obviously the loss to Argentina, I know they made it to a yep. World Cup final, but the pool of talent, Philippe, that's available to him. This is an outstanding French and has been for quite some time in terms of the quality which Deschamps has available t- uh, to him. I- is there amongst the French football and public uh, more of an expectation that he needs to go and win another major championship with a squad of this undoubted talent? I, I think that the, uh, the almost expectation is there, obviously. But I would say that... Um, First of all, um, that World Cup did a lot of good to Deschamps' credit in his home country. There were loads of people before the tournament who were expecting um, a difficult uh, World Cup um, because of the um, injuries. I mean, there were 13 players missing at one point just before the the tournament started. Uh, Also because of the quality of the performances, which had been great, uh, an absolutely catastrophic Nations League, as you will remember. And in fact, France surprised us all during the tournament by not just by the performances, but all by, by the results, but also by the performances and the way they played. So, in a way, going to the final was a little bit unexpected for from a French perspective, I think. Mm. And then, when it came to the qualifiers, when you <coughs> score, I think it's the ideal start to the qualification campaign. Two minutes in, an absolutely superb movement with Griezmann getting the ball. Passing on the ball, I mean, there's a lovely interaction between Mouani and Mbappe. Mbappe crosses back, Griezmann, unbalanced, beautiful first-time shot in the corner. After two minutes play against the the Netherlands. So I can tell you that that certainly lifted the pressure. And the performance against the uh, the Dutch lifted the pressure. And the performance against the Irish would also lift the pressure because it will have shown that France, when confronted with a a very difficult, more difficult adversary, somebody, a, a team that plays the kind of football which usually creates problem for them because, again, the capacity to play with a low block, the organization and so forth, the denial of space, France actually managed to do that. And we were also expecting, well, what about a France without Hugo Loris, Steve Mandanda and, and Raphael Varane? And the answer is that, well, we've got obviously a phenomenal keeper. We knew that, but we have confirmation. And the Upamecano um, Konate uh, pairing looks actually very interesting, knowing that there are also quite a few people in the back. You know, William Saliba would probably have played, yeah, um, was a, a bit of a class player, and there are quite a, a few others who are, who are missing. Presnel Kimpembe, uh, who's played a number of times for France, was also missing, so it's looking good. And I would say that Didier Deschamps <coughs> is today in a very, very good place, uh, which for a French manager who's been in place for 10 plus years, that is quite an achievement. Philippe, we've got to leave it there. Congratulations on your victory and thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.